What do you think is the reason for this drop? Can you talk about that a little bit more? We saw, I wouldn't say institutional, I'd say, um, you know, technically they were whale selling um, holders of over a thousand Bitcoins. So that's either very, very large holders that are personal and private or um, institutional. But like the, their holdings dropped um, and that w- they were dropping bef- slightly before the, the, um, the crash. And so, yeah, th- that dropped. Um, and un- unlike, you know, normally what we see is when what we have seen in, in past months is whenever the institutions or whales uh, dropped their holdings, the next tier below, which is like 100 to 1,000 Bitcoins in holdings, they would gain um, almost a mirror image and they were, were soaking up those coins. Um, and in this case, the the next tier below the, the, the what we call the dolphins and sharks, um, they they were pretty steady. And so um, all of those coins that were being unloaded by the whales just were um, had to be absorbed by um, the smaller um, buyers, which they, they couldn't maintain the price at that point. And so, yeah, um, despite I mean, the interesting thing was that as this whole thing started to to cave and the price dropped and, um, you know, crypto Twitter, the world was going, oh, Bitcoin's going into a bear market. It, you know, we don't see 50% drops like this without like a bear market. Um, that was completely different. Um, that view was completely different on chain. We saw a whole lot of new entrants come in for the very first time to buy their bitcoins and the holders of one bitcoin or less so you know uh, fifty thousand thirty thousand dollars investment um that um those numbers started skyrocketing and so um smaller players came in to buy that dip and um so the actual user count um on the network increased as this thing was selling down and it's just that the, the the buying power by a sea of smaller retail it was not um, sufficient um, to counteract the the sell off coming from Wales. You know that's interesting because I'm like I'm seeing like you know even in um, the chat analysis and looking at the the way in which um, the price action is analysed. Um, the selling comes from Binance and the buying comes from Coinbase and there's a net shift mm. in coins. Um, and I don't know if it's some intricate arbitrage thing that's happening or whether or not um, it is actually Chinese, um, <laughs> the Chinese selling their coins. And like now that we've seen they're banning, um, banning mining, I, I don't know what the, what's causing that, but it definitely looks like um, the West is buying and the East is um, divesting. So I don't remember the, you know, what the exact wording was in the blog post um, where it talked about that, but I, I feel like it hinted at people essentially trying to move their coins offshore, maybe to avoid certain regulation or something. But will you feel like it's um, the, simply that uh, Asians are se- or, or the Asian market is selling and that America, the Western market is buying? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just guessing at theories. I have no, I have no real information. I'd probably have to, you know, figure out what really happening in the industry by talking to people um, rather than just looking at the, the sheer numbers on charts. Um, but yeah. And, you know, like, you know, back to this point of the, the supply on these exchanges. Um, the interesting thing for me is that we, we've been in an era with um, such strong institutional and high net worth um, buying that um, on chain has come very, become very dominant in the first half of this year. Uh, because those guys uh, move their coins off the exchanges and put it into cold storage. Uh, but now we're in this phase where retail's really ramping up and they're coming in to buy this dip. And typically the second half of these, you know, one in year bull um, markets that, you know, go crazy vertical, um, the tail end of it is very, very dominated by retail. And um, I think the picture might be a little bit harder to read, mainly because, um, there might be a lot of buying from retail, um, but they don't withdraw from exchanges as much as an institution would. They, they're quite happy to leave their coins on their Coinbase wallet. And so you'll see potentially um, the supply on these exchanges increase and increase because they're, they're in long-term holdings by retail. Um, and it looks like um, 
coins are being sold in, but um, in actual fact, they're in long-term hold by by retail who are just using their their the exchange wallet. So um, I think the second part of this year will be quite interesting, and um, I think we need to know that and that effect is happening. You know, obviously, um, you know, a lot of people have seen from the news that um, Elon Musk tweeted out um, that they were no longer taking payments to, um, you know, pay to, you know, for for their Tesla sales. And they cited reasons um, that um, Bitcoin was, you know, very, very fossil fuel heavy in in its network. Um, And so in, in that view, there's there was this finally there was someone who was relatively respected amongst technology actually validating a lot of one of these fud points that um uh, the the mainstream media have been throwing at bitcoin which i don't think is actually valid but nevertheless um it sent a shockwave of fear through the market the the price started plummeting within seconds to minutes of that tweet um and um the market setup at that point was already quite soft um there it was it was making a um a light recovery it was tentative and um it was starting to move upwards um and that that's also from a fundamental lens when you look at what was happening on the investment activity on the blockchain and then when that tweet came out um it instigated um severe amounts of selling not only um on derivative markets and spot markets um we actually saw like significant sell-off um as coins started to flow into exchanges um so real coins got moved and they they were moving from um wallets that um were quite young um the the, the coins the coins held um between one to six months of age so relatively new um comers to bitcoin is what i can tell and um i think a lot of them saw a lot of you know, really nice um, rises in Bitcoin from the 20,000 up to the 60, in the 50 to 60 range, and they probably took the opportunity to take profit. And so, um, you know, we saw this this huge, huge, um, well, I just call it tidal waves of coins moving into the exchanges. And um, ultimately, the whole derivatives market started to unwind. Um, anyone who was long got um, liquidated. Um, so that added further selling pressure. And so just we had this cascade of complete unwinding and sell-off. And um, what I think it went down to 30 or 29,000 um, in the final, when the final dust had cleared and it bounced up and then it was recovering. And then <laughs> China announced that um, they were banning Bitcoin miners and reiterated their um, their stance on um, no trading for their, their, their um, nationals. So... Um, and that's a big thing because you know miners um, are uh, are heavily located in China, so um, that sent another wave of fear and price sold down. So we're now in this situation where Bitcoin's um, heavily discounted below fundamentals, um, and the markets, you know, attempting a a, um, a recovery. Um, it's going sideways upish now. <laughs>